Architecture Codex. If you want to see more, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. We tend to think that the era of major religious commissions is over, since corporations have all the money, they build all the big buildings. With the construction of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople, Architecture Codex video number 81, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, Architecture Codex video number 13, and St. Paul's in London, Architecture Codex video number 76, all the other houses of worship were just small also rants. But we have also seen major religious commissions get started recently or continue into our current era. This includes Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Architecture Codex video number two, and Our Lady of the Angels in Los Angeles, Architecture Codex video number 19. Add to that list then the Hassan II Mosque, completed relatively recently in Casablanca. This is the largest mosque on the continent of Africa and one of the largest in the world. It was designed by architect Michel Pissot. Groundbreaking was in 1986, and it was completed in 1993. This construct was part of an overall program to make Casablanca a destination city for pilgrims, businesses, and tourists. This larger vision is part of the plan of the current ruler of Morocco, King Mohammed VI. He is interested in reforming and improving his country. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into Moroccan politics as I am sure it is complex and I am not sufficiently schooled in that. I have heard a lot of good things and some bad things about the current king from Moroccan people. But even if the Moroccan society currently is not as perfect as we in a free Western capitalist society would like it to be, I am still interested on the journey that the king has set upon. His goal is to make Casablanca a modern city, accepting Western European culture. This includes making Morocco the African home of the major international corporations, which simultaneously will solidify the economic base and modernize their technology. He has shifted the second language of the country from French to English to improve the population's ability to work in a global economy. And hopefully that will all impact the poorest people in Morocco. There is a massive building program akin to a Roman or Byzantine emperor or a Renaissance pope. It includes improving the highway connection between Casablanca and Marrakesh. It includes preparing for the African soccer finals in 2025 and someday they hope the World Cup. And it includes turning the rough coast of Casablanca into a tourist beach, a resort destination. Much of Morocco is desert, but west of the Atlas Mountains, the climate is moderated by the moist winds off the Atlantic, and the terrain is more green. For Americans, whose entire concept of Casablanca was formed by the Hollywood movie, they may be hesitant about the modernization because they want to preserve the city the way they knew it in the movie, even though that was just a Hollywood set. For that kind of tourist, the old sections of the city are preserved, complete with its bazaar. There is, in fact, a restaurant called Rick's Cafe, even though it has nothing to do with the original Hollywood movie and looks nothing like it. But they built it because American tourists will stop by just to say they have been there. And while many cities of the former Roman Empire had therapeutic natural hot springs, Casablanca was not one of them. As it is, Americans have always been misinformed about the nature of Casablanca. And what in heaven's name brought you to Casablanca? My health. I came to Casablanca for the waters. The waters? What waters? We're in the desert. I was misinformed. <laughs> the first African McDonald's arrived in Casablanca in 1992. Now, I used to poo-poo the proliferation of McDonald's and other American fast food chains around the world off the North American continent because I thought they were built for American tourists who were reticent to try the local cuisine and really engage the local culture. But since then, my international friends and relatives have told me that most of the patrons for these restaurants 
are the locals who are going to it to experience a little bit of American culture without having to fly across the oceans. This is similar to how Americans like good foreign cuisine food shops in their own town. American culture, if not our politics, is very popular around the world. That is why two luxury housing developments in Casablanca have been named Florida and California. For me, the visit to Casablanca was a return of sorts. As my father, serving in World War II, first landed at the port of Casablanca in November of 1942 as the American army moved across North Africa. My father was not infantry, but part of the logistics group, the Sixth Port, which followed the army from port city to port city as the war advanced, basically Casablanca to Naples to Marseille. Still, his photos, like those images of Casablanca from the movie, are from over 80 years ago. The history of the region has often been about outside influences. There was an ancient Roman port city, Anfa, the Berber word for a hill, established around 15 BC, conquering the people they called the Berbers, a derivation of the word barbarian, the term used by Greco-Romans for anyone who did not speak Greek or Latin. It is an onomatopoeia for the unintelligible sounds of their language, which sounded like to the Greeks, bar 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 ba 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 ba. By the 8th century, an indigenous tribe we still call the Berbers took over the region as part of the Muslim expansion. This society moved into Spain, and since they came from the region of Morocco, they got the name the Moors. These days, they prefer to shed the names that came from outsiders and call themselves Amazing. By the 16th century, European colonialism moved in. The Portuguese took over, followed quickly by the Spanish, when the name Casablanca became the common usage, although the Muslims still use the Arabic form of the same name, Dar al -Baida. The French began to control the region, ruling with a sovereign sultanate in 1906, and officially named the city Casablanca. The city saw its greatest growth at that time from 12,000 people to about 110,000 people by 1921. During World War II, the Vichy French controlled the government of Morocco, but then they were controlled by Germany. Casablanca was a place where Allies landed on the African continent in 1942. The Free French controlled the region after the war, but after some bloodshed, Morocco achieved independence in 1956 and has been ruled by the royal family ever since. The modern city of Casablanca began with Mohammed VI's father, Hassan II, after whom the mosque is named. The mosque, completed in 1993, cost about $700 million. It can hold 25,000 people on the inside, with another 80,000 on the open grounds outside. The architect, Michel Pousseau, was French, and a graduate of the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Pissot was a friend to Hassan II since the 1970s and completed many commissions in Morocco. The mosque is built on the Atlantic coast, across from the bay, where the tourist beach is being constructed. The proximity to salt water of the Atlantic caused some problems with the concrete foundation, but that has since been corrected. The mosque design reflects traditional Arabic geometries with a modern sense of space possible because of the 20th century engineering. The footprint of St. Peter's Basilica could fit inside its perimeter walls. There is a central nave reaching 130 feet high with elevated balconies in the 90 foot tall side bays. The space is set aside for the women to pray. Sections of the roof retract allowing for open prayer during moderate and clear weather. Otherwise, the space is heated and cooled with modern HVAC equipment. The materials of the mosque are all of Moroccan origin, all of the granite, marble, and wood, although there are some white marble Italian columns and the chandeliers are also Italian. There is extensive use of mosaics, wood carvings, plaster moldings, etc. that was the work of 6,000 Moroccan artisans. While the core structure is reinforced concrete, the decoration inside and out exudes traditional Islamic forms, including the Moorish style. These include the horseshoe arches, the stepped coffers of the ceilings, elaborate geometric grills in both wood and stone, crenulated edges at architectural transitions, 
and the decorative column capitals, many employing the Marquana style. This technique carves up the capital or ceiling with a honeycomb of vertical strokes that progress outward from the wall or column and upward to the arch or the ceiling. It is a unique and original form to this region of the world, appearing first in the 11th or 12th centuries. Like traditional mosques, there are places for ablation, the ritual cleaning and places to stow your footwear. There is a single minaret, which reads more like a bell tower, that reaches almost 700 feet high. Traditionally, the minaret was the tower from which the muzin, having climbed to the top, would chant the call to prayer. These days, it tends to come from a speaker placed up there with the muezzin at the bottom chanting into a microphone. This tower features a laser that beams light 19 miles across the sky and is aimed at Mecca, the direction to which all prayer is made. The Hassan II Mosque is a dramatic and beautiful testament to the aspirational glory that Morocco is trying to create. But the buildings are merely a representation of something more complex going on, the struggle for traditional Islam and monarchy to peacefully coexist in a world that has some very different values. Some say this is just a search for more money. But even then, shared interest can often be the start of a beautiful friendship. Most cities have their golden age when a powerful person or ruling class supports a massive arts and architecture program. It becomes the identity of the city. Medieval Venice, Renaissance Florence, and Moorish Granada. So it is interesting to see such a program happen in our time, in real time, in Casablanca. But such programs are rarely done with total consent. So you are bound to hear stories about conflicts, disagreement, and perhaps some grave injustices. Still, it might not be too long before people in that region of the world contemplating a relaxing beach vacation do not go to the Riviera, do not go to the Amalfi Coast, but instead come to Casablanca for the Atlantic beach waters. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.